Hi, my name is David Keegan. I'm an academic family doctor here at the University of Calgary. And what we're talking about today is how to understand your organization using the four frames model by Bowman and Deal. This is a really cool model and the reference for it is right here. In this model they say that people sometimes might make the mistake of trying to understand something that's happening in their organization but only from one lens. And they say there's actually four key lenses. To me, this was an amazing new insight to learn. So they say the first lens is what's called structural. Whoops, there we go. So the structural lens includes things like, um, things like you know, governance, committees, policies and procedures, rules, stuff about like authority, you know, there's like the working parts of an organization. And this is how we often think about things. So if something's gone wrong, we might think, like if something failed at a committee, you know, we thought we had, we thought this was a great idea. And yet, this committee didn't approve it. They struck it down. It's like, oh, but I brought it to the right committee. And it sometimes might be unclear that the answer to what happened might actually not be in the sphere or the lens we're looking through. So, or the frame we're looking for, through the frame we're looking through. So this is structural. But sometimes the answer is there. Sometimes I, I've been there when people are sort of struggling with getting a project off the ground. And I say, okay, have you talked to this person? And they're like, no. And meanwhile, that person is the person who literally has the authority to approve their project and has access to resources to make their project happen. And they, they haven't actually paid attention to the structural side of an organization. And that's their key failing. The next frame is human resources. This is where an organization is a community. You know, things like, you know, do you have the right people? Do your people have the right skills? Um, you know, do they, uh, are their needs taken care of? You know, people might be thinking, wow, you know, nobody's getting behind this initiative, even though everybody wanted it. But maybe it's because they've just heard there's a budget cut company coming and they're worried about their job. So they can't even invest the mental energy into thinking about this new project. You know, so it's all about human resources, uh, who, the people we have, we're a community. Next is symbolic. And so symbolic is things to do with like literally symbols, stories, foundational legends, that sort of thing. Um, it's all about the symbolism of things. Uh, and, in, and some of it might be visual, uh, some of it might not be. And it's what people say about you know, how things are. It's getting really into like almost even like the culture. But there's kind of like two pieces of culture. There's probably one key piece of culture. So, you know, sometimes somebody just chose the wrong name for a project and that was a name that conveyed all sorts of negative reactions because there was a terrible project three years before that had the same name. And they've unfortunately chosen a symbol, the name that just was perfectly designed, this project in the structural frame might have been perfectly organized within a human resources lens, but on a symbolic level it was just hard for anybody to kind of connect with because it, it was just a bad name, you know? And then finally, there's political. Now, people often think political is kind of like gritty and stuff. No, but this is like about, you know, relationships primarily. Relationships, connections, and sometimes there might be some negative politics. There might be a key person who had something in the past and they're, maybe they're bearing a grudge or something. Yeah, there can be some of that too. 
but it's mainly around, you know, what can we do in, in this uh, frame to move things forward. So here's the model. Whenever you're trying to understand what's going on in your organization, but also it's good to use whenever you're trying to make something happen, think about the structural things. Am I in the right places? Have I been talking to the people who have got the correct authority for this sort of sphere? You know, are there rules and policies that I should be following structures? Because if there's like an actual, you know, template for describing my project and I'm not using it, that's going to make it tougher for people to be able to prove it. I'm already causing trouble kind of thing. Um, that's what you do. Next, in human resources, for any project, you got to make sure that, you know, there's the right people with the right skills, you know, that they're being taken care of, that they're, you know, if they really need something to get their job done and it's not being provided and you either don't know about it or you know about it but you're ignoring it, it's not going to go forward. And the flip side is that if you want somebody to succeed, you make sure that you've got this all set up right. Next, symbolic. This is a chance where you can go back to your organization and think about what were the things or are the things that people are really proud of, about, you know, or, you know, there, there's every university, every business, every organization will have some sort of stuff that they either look to now or think about and talk about and harken back to that you can connect something to and show that your project or your initiative is building on this previous success or it fits with this culture in this way. And then finally, political. <clears throat> you make sure that you develop the right relationships, that if you're, you know, that as a person in your organization, you're not just focused on your projects only, you make sure that you're a citizen. You make sure that you're seen to be a citizen so that you actually do help out when there are large projects that need to be done and where you're obviously a person who should be helping with it. You know, and so then by, by working on these relationships and building like your, your network within your organization, and so you've got this, these connections and stuff, they're not like gritty, slippery, negative connections. No, it's that you've become a citizen. You're part of this organization as a community, as a citizen, and therefore, when you go forward with things in the future, they're not coming out of left field. They're coming from somebody who you've all, you know, the other person has already got presumably a trusting relationship with you. They've seen your work. You know, you've, you've been a citizen and it makes it easier for them to be able to like look at this and help you with understanding where some of the trickier negative political things are. They'll give you the, the insight, you know, uh, have you talked to Sarah? No, I haven't talked to Sarah. It's like, you really got to talk to Sarah about this because she has some history with this that you need to know about so that you don't go making the same, you don't get into the same challenges that she got into. But she's going to help you. If you want, I can even connect you and I can talk to her first if you want. That's, that's what the political frame is, is where people are working with you in an authentic relationship and they, and, and so that you can see uh, where the challenges are and where the opportunities are and they can help with all that. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.